Hello everybody, I am Mike B. Aardvark and this is going to be a walkthrough of a TRLE level by Agent XP. I'll put a link below to where you can download the level to play yourself from trle.net which contains thousands of free to download and free to play Tomb Raider level editor fan made games. So let's start with a new game. And rather than selecting a level we're selecting an outfit. All the options shown here are exactly the same level with the same details and places and objects. The only difference being in the costume that Lara is wearing. I like the Explorer level which was taken from one of the Crystal Dynamics games, uh, probably Tomb Raider Legend. And here we go. At the time of recording, which is December 2016, it's the 20th anniversary, 20 year anniversary of Tomb Raider and Lara Croft and Agent XP set up a challenge to other builders to create some classic levels with all the look and feel of the original four Tomb Raider games which were developed by Core Design and I think he's done a pretty good job on this one has elements of TR1 and TR4 in it so Let's get started. You can see a closed gate. So we'll need to find somewhere to open that. And there's some sort of tower. So let's see if we can make our way up there. Not quite like that though. Let's just calm down and take things a little bit more slowly. No need to rush. I've got all day. So, our very first pickup will be a box of wide shotgun ammo. And here's a lever. <coughs> which opens the gate for us. Oh, what's that? he said theatrically. Let's hop over and find out. Hmm, hat, whip, Henry Jones Jr. I presume. Well, it looks like he won't need be needing his shotgun. So we make our way into the first anti-chamber. Let's have a bit of a look round. We have a pit. We have a number of jars which we can shoot. Some other types of jars or vases which we can't shoot. An unlit torch a closed door hiding a sarcophagus some other torches now you notice this block is a slightly different colour which means it's pushable, movable and we can easily see that if we select our binoculars Turn on the light and you can see it stands out very clearly. So pull it out. J 
jump on it, which means we can make our way up to here. I like to shoot all the boxes, all the vases, have all the pickups, kill all the enemies. So here we go. Some shotgun shells. Nothing under that one. Nothing under that one. There's some over there that we can't quite get to at the moment. Let's see if we can manage it. We can shimmy across. Oh look, those eclipse. But nothing there. And while we're here... Well no, not while we're here. Be easier when we're nearer. I was going to shoot the vase over the way, but it would be a lot easier when we're nearer to it. Having seen the unlit torch, you might think we need to find a torch and unlight it in order to open the door, and you'd be quite right. Oh, what am I playing at? I need to move this box again so that I can get up to where the torches are. They're actually hidden inside another vase. Very cunning. Note this torch here. In the first version of this level, the builder forgot that we could... Uh, use a shortcut and move the block under it and light the torch that way instead of making our way all around the room to a lit pot on the other side which is how he intends us to light the torch so let's press on I'm waffling a bit Little squeak there from Lara, it's quite a heavy block, she's only a little thing. Note that wooden chests can also be shot, and since pistols only fire horizontally, you have to hop up to target them. Nothing under the first one, but under the second, in case you forgot Indy's shotgun. There's another one here. We'll need the shotgun shortly because skeletons, which will appear in a minute, cannot be killed with normal weapons, but the shotgun will knock them back and can knock them into a pit which will destroy them. Right then, let us go and get our torch. Need to do it better than that. What's going on? That's better. It's given us three torches here. So we might lose one or two. So save having to climb up again. Let's just throw a couple of them down. Let's clear the way with the glasses. I noticed there was a skeleton in one of the pots.
quite often the skeletons are stupid and jump off and kill themselves, <coughs> saving us the bother. Now, if you draw a weapon <coughs> with the draw weapon key, she'll drop the torch where she stands. Otherwise, if you throw it, you can't really tell how far it will go. But we found another pickup of shotgun shells. Little interim save, to, just in case I make a mistake, as I'm prone to. Let's just hang about a bit and see if he comes over to us and falls down. No, perhaps not. Press on. Drop the torch again. Try and get his attention. Nope. Well, we'll need the shotgun in a minute. Oh, here he comes. And he's fallen down. So we don't need the shotgun. Let's continue over then. Picking up more shotgun shells on the way. Clearing a few more varsies out of the way. Oh dear, that's why we say because sometimes the finger slips and doesn't do what she's meant to do. And finally, now this is a pot with fire, which is where we light our torch. Throw it down because before we use it there are two more wooden chests over there. And one of them contains a small medipack. Not that one, this one. But I do like to shoot everything. So let's hop over and grab the medipack. Pick it up, you have to duck and crawl. <coughs> and then pick it up. And down we go. Pick up our torch, light the torch in the wall bracket. Now we need to take the torch with us, so I'll drop it by the door, which is about to open when I step into here. Hear the door open? Right then, let's have a look in the sarcophagus. Oh, what is that? Mechanical Scarab. If you remember TR4 and Cleopatra's Palaces, you'll know what that's for. We'll need it later on. Now, let's clear off all the jars in the lower area. Some of them have items under them. Let's 
some of them contain enemies. This one contains a scorpion. This one contains a scorpion. One of these has nothing. One of them has Uzi clips. Sorry, Desert Eagle clips. That's the best gun in the game. This one has a scorpion. And the last one has a skeleton. Obviously you can ignore these if you don't want to bother with them. As I mentioned, the skeletons can't be shot, but they can be knocked back with the shotgun. And then knocked into the pit. Notice if you try and shoot... There we go. Their shield it doesn't have any effect and you've wasted your shot and you'll probably get a slice at you with that wicked looking sword. Now then, let's go down into the pit and get our first secret. This is one of those pushable blocks. Notice that the floor behind the block here is sloped which means you can't pull it out so we'll have to push it in. three times. Uh, it's pretty dark in here, or we'll light a flare, so you can see we can jump up, jump over, and our first secret. Don't want to waste shotgun ammo on this vase. You might remember the canopic jars from Tomb Raider 4, but in this game they don't serve any purpose except to mark the fact that you've got a secret. Now since we pick up the Desert Eagle here, the skeleton to Lara's left will come alive and try and kill us. So we're getting ready to run away. Pick it up, run away, light a flare so we can see where we're going. Hug the left wall here. Otherwise she won't make this jump. Sometimes a skeleton can make its way through the block, so don't hang about. And there we go. Whoops, it didn't fell off. See, there's the spare torches, which we can come back and get if we need them. And here's the lit one. Right, we're now to come into a new major area, so I'll take a checkpoint save. And I will also drop my torch here because outside in the valley there are three giant scorpions which we have to deal with before we can look around without being bothered. Also pay attention when he gives you a flyby. <coughs> it shows you where you can go and where things are. And the nasty music says there's danger. I'm not particularly fond of combat, so I often adopt, uh, where possible, a chicken shit strategy and go somewhere safe where I can shoot the little buggers 
with impunity. Might have to actually lure them out though, lure them a bit nearer. They're fast, so run, run as fast as you can. Whoops, wrong way. Because they can poison you and you have to waste a medipack curing yourself. Right. Safe and can shoot him. One down, two to go. Let's save so we don't have to do it all over again. Of course, if you're a big, bad killing machine, you can just get in there amongst them and hop about and dodge and run. I think he's uh, seen us. Run back to my safe spot. Hopefully he's following. I don't want to stop and turn around because he's quite fast. Yeah, he followed us. Need to go and lure him back again. down. Save our progress. <coughs> Go and deal with the third one. Actually let's uh, try a proper combat using a stronger weapon, the shotgun. Where is he? Don't want him sneaking up on us. While we were running about, let me just mention that this L-shaped valley is a bit of a hub with uh, other areas going off of it, such as that one. And that pyramid area. What's happened to him then? Sometimes they run into walls and get themselves stuck. in case but he went in here although I don't think they're meant to <coughs> oh 
Oh, wow. The mystery of the missing scorpion. Right, scattered about this valley are four star objects. In Tomb Raider, keys are not always keys, but key items can be put into receptacles to cause doors to open. So let's collect the four stars. Let's dive in the water. Climb on this block. Actually, I have to be around this side. Hop up. Yeah. Now, as soon as we hop up onto the first step of the water fall, a boulder is going to roll down and try and squash us. So, not like that. Oh dear, what's going on today? Okay, since we've pulled up, the boulder will crush down, so I'm going to hop to my right to get out of its way. And there it goes. Don't want really shotgun ammo. And in under the bars, there was the first of four stars. To deal with the chop blades, walk up close to them, but not into them obviously, wait till they're fully up, and run forward. That way you won't take any damage at all. Of course it's a different matter when you under time pressure. And exactly the same thing to get through them again. You can just jump in the water. Oh, while we're there. If you look up, you'll see something floating in the sky. That's actually the Uzi pistols resting on an invisible platform. We'll collect that, which is a secret, a little bit later on. Well, a fair bit later on. Anyway, let's come into this area. Don't run too far because there's a little trench with spikes in which will certainly put a crimp in your day <coughs> let's just crawl backwards at the very far end where there aren't any spikes where we can find some flares and a medipack now then Over. Right, the slope of the pyramid. And if we go to the edge and look down, a couple of trapdoors which will open, which is what we need to do at the very end of the level. If you look up, that raised, that second block there has a receptacle on the wall and we need an item to fit into it which will cause those trapdoors to open. 
but that will be the very last thing we get because in order to get that we have to do quite a lot of work fairly obvious movable platform uh, box so we push it out of the way and we get our second star and while we're here we can go for another secret and a few items this trump is a bit tricky sometimes it doesn't uh, have to be quite precise otherwise you miss and fall down and have to climb back up so bugger that for a game of soldiers do a quick save see that's what can go wrong if you don't quite make it let's try going a little bit tighter no perhaps that was too tight because then she hit the slope there we go pull up here large medipack this time as I say don't bother going and jumping about on the pyramid because we need that uh, item before it's any good but we go this way jump from ledge to ledge now if you jump from right at the edge she can suddenly change <coughs> direction and leap at right angles which will not really do be what you want so as well as the step hop back take a step back and you should be all right and from here again it's going to be a tricky jump we want to jump over to the slope just above Lara's head and when she slides down you want to grab on and shimmy all the way to the right to the pillar that we move the movable block from underneath again this is uh, sometimes a bit tricky but no we made it this time shimmy 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 shim 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 nearly there and we have some more desert eagle clips don't uh, <clears throat> make your way down yet because if we hop over to this central spire of rock it's a secret and we get some grenades so <clears throat> run jump back grab drop <coughs> oh, I do apologize for the coughing I'm not terribly well at the moment back into the main area still no third scorpion perhaps I killed it didn't re realize aha anyway hop up onto our safe spot and actually climb further on backwards now we can shimmy round can't shimmy around the corner because Laura's legs dangle too far but we can pull up turn and drop back down again and here is the third star you don't uh, drop back down or you'll take some fall damage you need to return the way we came in oh, if she jumps back too far and gets her head caught in the ceiling like that she's sort of stuck and you have to uh, wiggle her out of it so drop, hang, shimmy round the corner drop 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 
Let's go and recover our torch which we left here. Somewhere in here anyway. Ah, oh, there we are. Because as well as the four stars, we need a cartouche. And the cartouche is in two parts. And access to it requires lighting five torches for the one half and one torch for the other half. So, you see one unlit torch up there. You may wonder how we're going to get there, but uh, all will become apparent. Just in case that scorpion turns up. I uh, can't quite see it, but there's another torch at the end of the bridge. There's five torches we need to light for the first piece and one for the second. This one's nice and easy on ground level. Shows a little camera hint as to the door that's going to open to reveal it. Um, oh, right then. So that's one in the sequence, but uh, we can get the second half next. If we hop up onto this block with our torch, to drop our torch, use the weapon select and then she'll drop it at her feet rather than throwing it and maybe having it fall down. And we can push this block away which reveals yet another unlit torch. When we light it we hear a gate open. So, drop our torch. Actually, you need to be careful where you drop the torch because sometimes it can disappear into the floor. And unless you've got an extremely good memory, you might not be able to find it again. I think that's why he gave us three in the other room. So we've got some pickups here, but that's just incidental. Because we need to look inside this sarcophagus. Remember we got the clockwork beetle, but not the key from the other one. And in this one, We get half the cartouche, cartouche piece two, if we look in our inventory. So let's go and light some other torches and get the second half, which goes in that gold receptacle that you can see down the end there. So here we go, this block she's standing on will raise when we find a certain switch, so, oh there's the, um, last scorpion, throw me torch, get me weapons out. Shotgun, I think. I don't know where he was hiding, or where he is now. Perhaps he's in that room. Oh, let's have a quick save in case he bites us in the arse. Oh, no waste. Five shots. Run quite away being scaredy cat. 
actually we can shoot this box and there's another torch there um, we need the torch inside this room which is why it gives us one here and a convenient place to light it however <clears throat> back to our interrupted task not that one we've been there next one along Yeah, see the suspicious blue tile? Let's drop our torch on there. Over into this corner. And we can do a combo jump, backflip jump to get up to the top. So, jump, flip. Jump, flip. Not quite going right. Jump. Still not going right. My fingers are a bit rusty today. There we go, all the way to the top. Now then, jump over to here. Find this lever, which will raise the blue square block. Nice little picture showing you it. But before we go down, and continue with our torch lighting mission. Let's make a slight detour for another pickup or two. Jump over here, which is above the entrance. over here. Oh dear. <clears throat> Ran onto a slope and fell down. Uh, where are we here? One of the problems I'm having here is the game is a little bit laggy because I'm recording it for obviously posting on YouTube and the combination of recording and playing is a little bit much for my poor old PC so that was Desert Eagle Clips and more grenades so we want to make our way back again progress made i.e. pickups so we'll have a little bit of a save because could screw this jump up no problem. Like that. Although that wasn't deliberate, I hasten to add. Oh dear, not having a very good day today. Right. Over to this bit. No! What's going on? All of a sudden. Right. Saving on every individual step. Oh, she banged her head on the ceiling, which forced her sideways. And again. Let's see if we can jump all the way to that one. I'm going to say a rude word in a minute. Well, she got down without taking any damage, so sod it. Now, in case you forgot to put the torch on the block, you can jump up here with it, and then Again, holding the torch, jump up to here. So, pick up our torch and carry on. Hop. 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 
there's the door it keeps showing us. And on that little pillar behind us is the other cartouche piece. So, torch number two. We can't jump across just yet to get to the torch you can see in the distance because it's slightly too far. But we need to make a tr tricky little jump. I mean that's one thing that uh, <coughs> Stella's Tomb Raider 4 control page doesn't tell you, that you can steer in the air. Unlike real physics where you can't, community calls that sort of thing Tomb Raider logic. So here we go, run, jump and steer and miss. Another go. No. Just making a pig's ear of it today. And this is actually my second <coughs> playthrough for the walkthrough because I forgot to turn the microphone on, on the first time. So that's an hour and a half of me life I want back. It's all being caused by this extra lag. Of course, when she's holding the torch. There, finally. Lighting that torch puts a gate up so that we can now make it across to that central island. Assuming that is, we can get back without falling and hurting ourselves. Now, if you're lucky, when you jump this way, you can curve enough to get back onto the platform. <coughs> but you might land on the slope, in which case you can jump off and land on the platform. Or, as we may see, you may jump too far and overshoot. So, let's see what happens. First of all, we had an overshoot. Okay, great. And we hit the slope, but didn't jump. And again, I thought we were going to make it to the ledge. Jump too soon. Still jump too soon. Oh, this is getting ridiculous. Perhaps I need to redo it with a lower resolution. <coughs> I'm going to swear at you, Laura. Finally, 
don't run off and make me do it all again. So, before we go and light the torch we can see there, pick up the fourth and final star. However, as soon as we pick it up, we're going to get a vicious harpy bird, which will attack and poison and shoot fireballs at us. So I think we would like the desert eagle. And we can hear him flapping about. Again, the aiming is not very good. The lag is quite a lot here. So we have cartouche piece one, two rather, two star of Sirius, two star of Orion. Let's pick up our torch and continue to light the last two torches. Another shot of the gate. Now we have to jump round this way. And again. That was a bit close, but we made it. Right, finally the fifth torch lit, gate opened, can get the second half of the cartouche. Throw our torch down, we don't need it anymore. But instead of jumping down, let's go for those oozies floating in the air. We have to jump into that hole. And it's easier said than done. What we have to do is jump with a veer, but if we veer too soon we'll hit the wall and straighten up. And if we veer too late we miss the, the hole. Not quite sure I'm lined up right, but let's give it a go. Okay, getting better at that. The very first time I ever tried this it took about six goes, but since then I've always got it on the first. However, we now have to jump to that block in front of us. Well, jump and grab onto it and pull up. Oh, she's stuck in the wall again. Have to turn right round backwards. Of course, that means you can't get a proper run up. And also, you mustn't hit your head. So let's try a stand jump. I can't remember if that was what worked. Yes. Okay, not so difficult at all. Uh, where are we going from here? Right over to there. That should be a fairly straightforward one. And now another tricky one because the ceiling's in the way. We have to jump onto that block there. Um, let's see if I remember rightly. If you run across this diagonal, don't angle too far left, otherwise she hasn't got the distance and she'll fall off without jumping. But don't angle too far right or she'll hit her head and also fail. Oh dear. That's two goes. Three goes. Right, let's try it from there, see if that will work. Oh. Swear time. Nearly. 
we only got out a bit. That's better. Although she tried very hard to run off the far edge. Little minx. Now it's not straight at right angles. Double check your direction. There are the Uzis. So run, keep the faith, land on the platform and pick them up. And two more giant scorpions get spawned. You can probably shoot them up and here actually. Never thought about that before. One down. Where's the other one got to? Oh, he's gone over there. Right then. Um, five shotgun shells, I think. I took some damage somewhere along the way. Can't remember exactly where that was. Anyway, we jump over this way. We land on the slope and get down safely. Go and polish off this big badass scorpion. Where is the critter? There he is. There we go. Don't really need this torch, but I like to be tidy. Let's go and put it here with the unlit one. And <clears throat> quick trip back into this cave. To get the other half of the car ra car bar cartouche. Hop. All right then. Hop. Stop messing about, Lara. Of course, now we don't have to carry the torch up. We could uh, just grab on. And here it is, part one. Let's combine them. Yes, normally the inventory moves over a lot faster than this. It's because we're recording, I think. Use piece one, combine with Piece two gives us a bar cartouche. That was what is technically known as an illegal slope. Fortunately, uh, it's easy to get out of that, but sometimes you can't and it's game over or reload. So then safely down to the ground without taking any more full damage and we can do the three areas in any particular order each of them after a lot of work will yield a stone of something or other, stone of Solbeck, stone of Osiris, 
stern of Nuri, I think, and um, one other. Then they get put into an, uh, niches in areas inside here, where you can also get two more of the stones, which finally gives us the item we need to unlock the pyramid and make our way out. I like to do this one first because there's a secret in it which will give you the grenade gun which is pretty handy to have but we'll leave that for the next part so we'll make sure we have a save and say bye bye for now bye bye see you in the next part and thank you for watching